G'day guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now, bit of a different video today. I was thinking, considering the decade is about to wrap up, maybe I could go through and review slash recap my decade. So we're gonna take it back to the start of the decade, 2010. This is what I looked like at the start of the decade. What an absolute unit. This bloke would definitely steal your girlfriend. As you can see, as a 14 and 15 year old, I got up to plenty of activities, which included footy, footy and cricket. In 2010, I went on a camp to Tasmania, which was probably the highlight of the year. Uh, as you can see, Mid a Bowl came with me. 2011 came round and I was playing under 16 footy. Here's a couple of highlights of me having a bit of a run around. Go, Caden. Run hard. Run. Go, go, go. Look at that forward pressure. It doesn't sound like Dad was too impressed by my performance today, but I did snag a goal, which you can see on this grainy footage. I attended many footy games that year, including the 186 point flogging by the Cats to the D's at Simmons. 2011 was also the year Cook and I worked out how to sneak into the rooms. I did work experience at the Herald Sun with Glenn McFarlane, which was absolutely unbelievable. Played a lot of backyard cricket with Dutch, also went with Cooko to watch the Australian rules team train at Torquay. Not that you can see, but that is us in the background having a kick of the round ball. Also celebrated my birthday with the big Liam Van Gemst. 2012 came around and I was of the belief that the world was just about to end. I was in year 11 and school began to get a lot more serious for everyone around me but myself, to be honest. I attended more footy with Cook and Dutch. I went to my first party and the Ds were really, really bad. 2013 was an absolute shambles of a year for myself. It sucked. It was the worst year of my life so far. This is how I looked. Hey, pretty good. The year started well with the boys and I winning our debut season of indoor rebound volleyball. I recorded the entire season on camera and made an hour and a half documentary that has never seen the light of day. I moved footy clubs from Torquay to St. Mary's and a week before round one, which was against my old team Torquay, I blew my back out and I didn't play a game for the club. Went to my second party, this time everyone was drinking, which was so, so weird to me. Even though everyone was 18, I was 17, I just wasn't about that drinking life at that stage. Celebrated the D's second and only win by going down to the rooms and getting around Lyndon Dunn. I turned 18. This was my final year of school as well. I was in year 12 and I just had no idea what I was doing there, to be honest. I was walking around like a 85-year-old man with my back. I was struggling to get through class physically. I would come home and just lie on my bed. I didn't really see Cook and Dutch that much because I just hated life. And uh, yeah, capped off the year with a 29.75 ATAR, which is just impressive stuff, if you ask me. 2014 is a bit of a weird stage of your life. That first year out of school, you can pretty much get away with whatever you want. So the first year out of school, I didn't work. I volunteered a lot at a radio station called 94.7 The Pulse. I finally got to play a season at St. Mary's after doing a pre-season and my back getting better. But yeah, that year, that first year out of school is always a tricky one. But I spent it by doing a whole heap of nothing. 2015 was a bit of a turning point for myself. I realised that I wanted to do radio. So I continued to volunteer at 94.7 The Pulse. I had my own show at 11pm on a Thursday night. And from doing the radio show, I ended up uploading my first YouTube video. I uploaded a little skit from my radio show, which was me talking to Harry Styles. I went to my first concert ever with Cook in 2015. We went and watched One Direction at Etihad Stadium. We did it as a bit of a laugh, but I'm genuinely a One Direction fan and had the time of my life. I hit up TSC Cup Radio on Facebook and I asked if they needed any help with the commentary that they did. And after counting stats for a couple of games, I was asked to do the boundary riding. I was also hired at the Werribee Football Club as the ground announcer, which is one of the, I can't believe I did that. Like I've ge I genuinely can't believe I was the ground announcer at the Werribee Football Club. Through some of the work at Werribee, I got put onto the Melbourne Radio Training Institute, which was a six month radio course, which got you ready for the radio industry. So I signed up and did that and loved it. I also tried stand up, I also dyed my hair blonde. I also drank a lot. 
At the end of 2015, I graduated from the Melbourne Radio Training Institute and I was 100% certain that I'd get a job in the radio industry. So for the next six to seven months, all I did day in and day out was apply for work. But unfortunately, no work ever came. After coming off the back of one of my most successful years in 2015, 2016 was completely different. I was at an absolute halt in terms of my career. I was convinced after doing the radio course that I would get a job in the radio industry. And for the early part of 2016, all I did was send emails and receive none. I quit ground announcing because post-2015, I was almost certain that I was moving away for radio. I also gave up my TAC Cup commentary gig. Even though that was a volunteer thing, I didn't feel qualified enough to be doing special comments and boundary writing for a standard of football that I never achieved or never was good enough to play in. I was at an absolute halt, a genuine standstill. Um, and I was getting more and more frustrated. So I hit up my radio lecturer, Danny O'Grady, and was just expressing my frustrations with where I was at. He replies with something that probably shaped the rest of my decade. He just said that while I was applying for work, there's no reason why I can't keep being creative. He was asking if I had made a podcast or if I had started a YouTube channel. And I reply with a paragraph which is pretty familiar to some of the stuff that you guys send me through DMs. I've received some messages before where you guys say you're absolutely keen to start YouTube, you think you've got the passion for editing, but you're just a little bit afraid of being judged. And I think it's important to show that, you know, I was in the same situation, like I was in the same position. As you can see by this paragraph, I'm definitely not, um, I'm definitely not the confident outgoing bloke that it might appear that I am now. After Danny asked if I had a YouTube channel or a podcast, I replied with this. Yeah, I have like three or four videos that I've filmed, edited, and finished for all the intention of putting it on YouTube, but I've just held back actually publishing it. YouTube is something that I've been thinking about doing for ages. I have notes and notes in my phone of video ideas, but yeah, I reckon I'll just bite the bullet and put out my content. He replied with, it takes balls to do it, but that's all it is. F*** people's opinions, satisfy your own, and you'll kill it. Put it out there. So from 2016 onwards, I started uploading YouTube videos. And that was great. That was a great little hobby that I had, especially when I was still applying for radio work. Hopping into 2017, I still had that itch for radio. So even though I was making videos, I still wanted to be in and around a radio station. So I signed up for Sin FM in Melbourne. It's a community station based in Carlton. And it's where Hamish and Andy started. So... I thought it would be a great place to continue volunteering radio. It felt like a little step back considering I'd just done the Melbourne Radio Training Institute, but it was good because I met Rog. I met Connor Rogers. So while doing community radio with Rog at Sin FM, I heard of a job going at Kiss FM, but we both applied for the street team gig at Kiss and we both got it. So now we have the ball rolling a little bit. I'm now working on the street team at Kiss FM. I'm now doing some volunteer radio at Sin. I hit 10,000 subs on YouTube. And after a year where I felt like I bounced back, me and the boys finished it off with a trip to Byron Bay. 2018 was another year where I felt a little bit stuck. I went from 10,000 to 20,000 subs. I was slowly on the right track YouTube-wise, but was fairly lost personally. I'd always dreamed of moving to Melbourne, and that was something that I was working towards for a long time. And that opportunity presented itself when Connor's dad went away for three months and a room became available for that period. During the three months that I lived with Connor, I worked the least amount I have ever worked at Kiss FM. I produced the least amount of videos since starting YouTube, but I probably grew the most I've ever grown this whole decade. But it wasn't a wasted period. I did some pretty cool things. I did content with the D's. I made a couple of parodies. I collabed with Luke Kidgel. Rog and I drank most nights. <laughs> At the end of the three months, I moved back to Torquay and I felt a little bit more somewhat self-sufficient and fairly hungry and determined to get the best out of myself. By the end of 2018, I was still drinking and partying quite a lot and I felt like going forward, I needed to get rid of that distraction to be able to get the best out of myself. So after shaving my head and having a mini spiritual rebirth, I vowed to not drink for the first six months of 2019 except in brackets, Connor Rogers 21st birthday. I entered 2019 by being woken up in my $10 Kmart tent with a four day hangover from Falls Lawn. I'm gonna be honest, that is probably the worst I've ever felt physically after a weekend of drinking. And that was enough to send anyone off the piss for six months. It made my decision very easy. 
Once I got back from falls, I kicked straight into YouTube mode. I rebranded the channel by taking pictures of myself in front of my cupboards. <laughs> I worked more at Kiss and Gold. I didn't drink until Connor's birthday where I made a speech. Look at my hair. I, I just had no idea how long it took for hair to grow back. If you're ever gonna shave your head, just realize that it takes six to seven months for it to return. I thought it was like a two to three monther. After consistently getting out three to four videos a week, the footy season approached, which made things a lot more hectic. Sports host invited me to come down to the G and have a chat to Robo at half time. What an unbelievable experience. You couldn't wipe the grin off my face. At the start of the footy season, I received a weird DM from a very unofficial Twitter account saying that it was from the AFL. And after following it up, we realised that it was from the AFL and they were wondering if I wanted to collaborate with them to potentially make some content. And I said, no thank you. Lol jokes, I said absolutely. bloody So they wanted a couple of video ideas, so I sent them one of myself and Cookson going to as many games in an AFL round as possible thinking that there's no chance they're going to shoot us around all of Australia going to games of football. To my surprise, they absolutely loved it, and that's how the five games in five days video was born. I pulled my finger out and started juggling four or five videos a week. Cook and I began our podcast. I was working at Kiss FM. The D's sucked. Cook and I hit this shot from the other end of a basketball court. The AFL were interested in making a kids show with us. And we said, yep, cheers, which took us to places like Adelaide where we met Rory Sloan. What a bloke Sloan is. I released my first original song and Cookson and I went to the Brownlow and the Grand Final Parade. And to finish off 2019, after a hectic year doing a lot of different stuff for YouTube and the AFL, I quit my job at Kiss FM. Yes, so there you go, guys. I have quit Kiss FM. Um, it was just a casual job that I was doing a couple of times a month, really. But I have left Kiss FM, and now from 2020 onwards, I'm just focusing on YouTube, which is really exciting. Yeah, what a decade. What a decade that was. Uh, um, that was a lot of fun to make, a lot of fun to look back. Um, I just want to say I appreciate all the support, um, especially over the last two and a bit years. It has been, yeah, it's just been so much fun growing this YouTube channel and I've had a lot of fun with it and I can't wait to continue to do that in the next couple of years. And I'm really excited to, yeah, push myself, push my content and see how far we can take, uh, take this little channel. I genuinely appreciate everyone who watches, everyone who subscribes. Um, yeah, it means the world to me. Genuinely knowing that there's people out there that are pumped to see what you bring out. Um, it's cool. It's, yeah, it's unbelievable. So this will be the last video that I make for this year, for this decade, and I will have a little bit of a channel hiatus for the next three weeks. I'll be coming back middle of January, um, and I'm pumped. I love this part of the year where I get away from making videos for a little bit and freshen up the channel, change the channel art, come back and, um, and yeah, just be fresh for creating content. It's been a little bit hard the last month or so. I've just been a little bit, yeah, creatively burnt out and just sort of like sick of editing, sort of sick of looking at my channel, sort of sick of checking the numbers every few minutes, sort of sick of checking my Instagram, sort of, I'm just a bit sick of um, being in that bubble. So yeah, these next three weeks, I'm really gonna enjoy putting the phone down. I'm genuinely thinking about deleting a few of the apps on my phone, so I just don't look at any stuff. But um, yeah, keen to get away, keen to have a little bit of a break but also really excited to come back next year. Um, I think I said in a video not long ago that Dad and I will be moving in the near future, so I'm hoping that I can get another little studio and really deck it out with some stuff, because right now this is just a spare bedroom that I'm using, but um, yeah, hopefully if we do move, I can get, another little, get a little bunker where I can create some more content and um, yeah, try and get the best out of myself for you guys again. Once again, guys, Appreciate the support. Seriously value everyone out there who gets around my stuff. Pumped for next year. Pumped to come back. And I'll see you all very, very soon. Cheers.